But I've seen you as you wander I surely know you by now And as the time marks So I think the Plank Easy Keyboard is the best keyboard to use with an iPad for any kind of productive work. And hopefully this video will show you why. If you stick around to the very end, I'm gonna run through five productivity workflows that you can do with this keyboard with an iPad that you can't do with the Apple Magic Keyboard and probably most other keyboard cases for the iPad as well. So it seems like most people are looking at the iPad and they're trying to make it more and more like a laptop because in their mind that's what represents an iPad becoming useful enough to replace a laptop. So I think that's actually the wrong way of looking at it. I think what's interesting about the iPad is exploring its potential for allowing you to work with the computer uh, in a way that you can't with a laptop. So there are some things about the iPad that lend itself to use in different kind of environments and that's what's really fascinating to me. So I've always had this dream, this idea of using computers outside in the sun with your feet up and normal laptops just don't don't cut it. They run too hot. They're not very comfortable on your lap in that scenario. The screens are not really bright enough. The batteries don't really last and the fans kind of are too noisy for that kind of close proximity. So the iPad has got this range of attributes where it actually just really beats laptops. You know, the, the screens are brighter. They have the 120 hertz refresh rate, which the MacBook Pros don't have. The, the form factor, the battery, the efficiency, it's all sort of way better than laptops in many respects. So it seems like they could really almost offer the, the answer here. And then on top of that, you've got the the pencil and the touch screen, the handwriting, which is a really lovely way of working with a computer for taking notes and stuff like that. So that's an interesting benefit that just doesn't exist in the MacBook Pros either. And of course, the really big glaring advantage of iOS and iPads is the touchscreen interface. That touchscreen interface has been evolved over the years to really be a very productive way of interacting with computers. And a lot of people say, well, we need a mouse to get back to the level of productivity offered by desktops. I think that's actually kind of a mistake to look at it like that. If you do a test, with these mouse accuracy tests, you can see if you're using a touch screen, you can hit targets faster um, and more accurately at that speed than you can with a mouse. There's a thing when you're designing user interfaces called Fitz Law, which basically says that the further away from the current mouse position, the interface target, the harder it is to hit with accuracy, so it needs to be bigger. Well, that doesn't really apply to touch. In fact, you can actually place interface elements around the outside of the device because your fingers are near there. You can go from one place to another on the screen very, very quickly without compromising that accuracy. And that doesn't apply when you're moving a mouse. So in principle, in theory, a touch interface can actually have a real advantage over a mouse interface. But of course, there's still this big problem of how do you actually sit comfortably, use the iPad on your lap in a productive environment. Obviously, you can just hold it and tap away on it, but that's not full productivity. That's not full productive working. For that, you need a keyboard. And if you're really going to embrace the touchscreen interface, it needs to be stable. So any of the kind of folding cases that give you a little triangle at the back, they just fall over if you, if you push them. So it doesn't work. So Apple released their Magic Keyboard, which looks to be really a lovely piece of hardware. There's no, there's no doubt about it. The precision of that hinge, that mechanism is, is amazing. And the balance position, the weight in the base, it, they've worked hard to try and solve that tippy over issue. And if you check out the MKBHD channel, you'll see he demonstrates that the uh, iPad on the Magic Keyboard case is still actually very top heavy. You can still push it over quite easily, even with all that extra weight from the case. And of course the case and the iPad is still about as heavy as a laptop again. So it's, it's kind of gone a long way to becoming similar to a laptop, but actually still doesn't offer a lot of the benefits that a laptop offers, you know, opening it from, from closed on the desk, not as good as a laptop. Uh, lots of things where it still falls short. So I think it's kind of choosing a fight that's the wrong fight. And even the Magic Keyboard isn't gonna be that comfortable on your lap because it's still a flat piece, you know, it's still pressing on top of your legs. So the solution I'm coming up with here really improves on that. So the main area I'm really discovering has a lot of room for improvement when you're trying to explore full productivity kind of working with computers and iPads is the customization of your keyboard. So Apple laptops have a fixed keyboard. The Magic Keyboard obviously is Apple's idea of what the keyboard is. It has no escape key, no function row, and no customization. You can't program keys or layers to do anything different. You know, it is what it is. So the Magic Keyboard actually seems like it it's quite a nice bit of hardware if it's on your desk. So I can kind of see people using it. They keep the uh, iPad on the Magic Keyboard on their desk. And then when they want to take the iPad away, they actually take the iPad off the keyboard and they leave the keyboard on the desk. But of course, if you're just doing that, you might as well just use your ordinary desk keyboard and trackpad. There's no real need for all that fancy hardware and the, the portability. So I think I've kind of come up with a solution to all of this and 
worked out a way of really leveraging the the power and the, the unique features the iPad has without trying to pursue this idea of turning the iPad into a laptop and then compromising all of those wonderful features the iPad has. So there's two components to what I'm talking about here. One is using the iPad on a beanbag and the other is using this amazing little keyboard which is the same keyboard I use with the Mac. So the beanbag solves the problem of it being top heavy. You put the beanbag on your legs, you can put it on your knees, anywhere you like. It's super stable, it conforms to the shape of your legs, it is really comfortable, it's extremely light, it's just obviously polystyrene beans in there. Uh, so it you know it just sits on your legs, you don't feel it at all, it's, it's really stable. You can actually use the pencil quite happily on that, you can press hard on it, so you can definitely use the touch screen, which is one of the great advantages of iPad OS. So you can use that, you don't need to worry about having a trackpad or a mouse. And then with the keyboard, you can place it wherever you like, so you can optimize that position for your hands without needing to move the screen. So the screen can be more optimized for your, your sort of comfortable eye distance, as long as you can reach it to touch it, then the keyboard can be brought a little bit nearer. So that's a nice advantage over a fixed keyboard case as well. So if we look at the keyboard itself, we can see it really brings some real desktop class productivity functionality to the iPad and in a way that lets you use all of that on your lap in a super comfortable, different kind of environment. So the first thing we can look at with this keyboard, it is a mechanical keyboard. And that means it uses these little special switches under each key, which you can actually choose when you buy it, you can choose from different styles. So you can have different levels of resistance, different sound, different tactile feedback. You can actually create just the kind of keyboard feel that you want. And that's really nice, you know, it's nice having a keyboard set up just the way you like. So this is a really small keyboard, which lends itself wonderfully to this idea of using it portably with an iPad. And it's a 40% size keyboard, which means it gets rid of the row of numbers across the top, brings everything in. Every key is only one key's distance in every direction from your home row, the bottom row you use with your thumbs. So, you know, the, the amount of effort you use when you're using this keyboard is, is much reduced compared to bigger keyboards. And you can see the key layout is also linear, so it's in a dead grid. There's no stagger. And I've done another video looking at the difference between staggered and ortho linear keyboards, and you can really see just how much more logical this ortho linear layout is. The amazing advantage to having a keyboard like this is you can move the keys anywhere, you can rearrange them. So you're free to try new keyboard layouts, which means you can break free from QWERTY and explore new keyboard layouts, which is what I'm doing at the moment. So what I've done actually is rearrange my keys to use the workman layout, which is really fun. You can immediately see just how uh, little effort your fingers are gonna use compared to having to type on QWERTY, obviously once you've learned the new layout. Uh, but this, you know, you can do that, you're free to do that because the keys are all the same profile. Normal keyboards with the curve, you can't move obviously from, from row to row. And of course, any Apple keyboard, you can't move the keys around anyway. So there's another video on my channel, which I'll link to at the end of this video, that looks at this keyboard in a lot more detail than I'm going to do here. But it's a very, very powerful keyboard. It brings the idea of mechanical keyboards, packages it up with a lot of polish, makes it all very accessible. It's, it's, you know, it's brilliant. It's a really nice introduction to mechanical keyboards, but it's also, I think, the ultimate kind of manifestation of mechanical keyboards at the same time. So I'm, I'm really impressed by this. And of course, the real power of it is it's completely customizable. You can configure it exactly how you want and all of that customization stays on the keyboard. So you just plug it into any device, Mac, PC, iPad, whatever, and all your customization comes with it. So you don't have to have any software installed or anything like that. You don't even need to worry about Bluetooth. You just plug it into USB. So I do just want to mention that you will need a Mac or a PC to actually customize the keyboard and save the new configuration to the keyboard. Uh, but once that's done, you can plug it into the iPad and it works just fine with no software needed on the iPad. So the idea with a 40% keyboard is you use these layer buttons to get to keys that you know, you'd normally have another row for. And that's a huge advantage to that because it means you're only using these, these small finger distance movements. So your numbers are still across the top, but you obviously just need to whack the layer key so that top row, which is letters normally, switches to numbers. And the same with the shifted versions of those. You can either hit shift and the layer key, or you can just use the other layer key and go straight to that. But of course, that's just the way I've got it set up. You don't have to do that approach if you don't want to. So let's look at those five things I mentioned at the beginning. So this is a nice little example of just how much productivity power a keyboard like this brings to the mix. You know, you'd normally only really expect this level of productivity on a desktop environment, but it's here on the iPad and works really well. So the first thing is the escape key. So if you're using the Apple Magic Keyboard, you've got no escape key. And that kind of obviously works for some apps, but it's not gonna work for other apps. And if you're doing any kind of programming, uh, it's definitely not gonna work. 
And the second one, arrow keys. The Apple arrow keys has always frustrated me. You've got these two tiny up and down ones bunched up in the same size as one key, and then the left and right's to the side. It's awful. You either use it with your pinky if you want to kind of keep your main fingers on the home row, or you jump over and try and wrestle with those tiny keys. It's just not great. It's really not great. So on this 40% board, I've got my arrow keys set up on a layer. So I just hit this layer button with my thumb and I've got my arrow keys right there uh, on the home row with my fingers. So super fast way of getting arrow keys. Third point is media controls. So playing and pausing, volume, uh, skip track, previous track, that kind of thing. You, you might be used to using a function row for that, but actually I don't think that's very great because you've still got to look at the function row. It's very difficult to find the function row by feel because you're going over like two rows to get to it on a normal keyboard. Uh, with this, of course, you just use a layer system. So I've actually got mine set up. So I push both layer buttons down, which gives me this third layer. And on that layer, I've got all the controls I need to do playing and pausing, previous track, volume, and so on. Fourth super cool feature is having a numpad. So this keyboard, because it's the grid, the ortholinear kind of key layout, you can set up a numpad on one of the layers. So I've actually set up a special layer that you go into. You don't have to keep your thumbs on anything for this layer. Once you're in there, it stays there. So the keyboard then behaves in this way that I've kind of got set up for working with spreadsheets. So I've got WASD as arrow keys and then a full numpad for my right hand based on the, the right side of the keyboard. And because the keys are obviously in the grid, it's just like a real numpad. So that's fantastic and a great fun just working with spreadsheets. Obviously the Apple Numbers app on the iPad is a really powerful app. So this makes it super easy to work with. It's kind of just like looking at the right side of a really massive keyboard with the arrow keys and the numpad, but obviously just brought straight under your home row. So the fifth really cool thing that I'm doing with this keyboard that you can't do with the Apple Magic Keyboard is a full set of um, symmetrical modifier keys along the bottom. So I've got two controls, two alts and two commands. Uh, obviously on the Magic Keyboard, the Apple Magic Keyboard, there's no right control, which is a little bit annoying. Um, normally with a 40% keyboard like this, you wouldn't actually have a right shift, but I've obviously reconfigured mine so that I've actually got two shifts as well. I'm gonna throw in one more just for fun. So the sixth super cool feature that you can do with this keyboard is macros. Um, just, I've literally just started doing that today actually, which is uh, really exciting. So I've got a couple of macros set up that um, run a sequence of keys just on one of the layers. So if I hit the lower layer, for example, and then my single quote mark key, what it will actually do is give me two quote mark keys and then move the cursor back one place. So I can immediately be ready to type something in quote marks. And I've done that with a double quote and all three kinds of brackets as well. So that's really, really handy for programming, but also just typing. So obviously some programming applications can set up stuff like that within the application. But the really neat thing about having this at the keyboard level is it works in any app, whatever you're doing. So if you want to just put something in quote marks in a message, done, it's right there under your fingertips. That level of power in a system that you can transfer from device to device across platforms between Mac and iPad is, is really, really exciting. So I'm really interested to hear how people are using their iPads. You know, are you transitioning it to replace a laptop? Are you making it more like a laptop? Or are you kind of exploring new territory and moving it away from what a normal laptop is and seeing where that goes? Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, now's the time. I make films on design, usability and workflow. Uh, lots of fun stuff to cover. So um, feel free to like and share this video as well. And don't forget to hit the little bell button when you subscribe to make sure you're the first to know when I make a new film. And I'll see you in the next one. In the sky.